Welcome to the Connection podcast series. Uh, we are sitting with Neil Osmond of NOA uh, for part six, uh, looking at some trends uh, that are affecting us in the you know, global corrugated industry. Uh, Neil, welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. Um, Thank you, Dan. Neil, I'd, I'd like to uh, really look at the, the hot topic at the moment. Uh, and obviously the, the, the timing of this is, uh, this recording is perfect. Um, we are off the back of um, significant price increases in January. Um, the speculation is that uh, those are following through in February uh, for obviously recycled grades. Uh, we're also seeing uh, notifications that some of the coated craft um, is also going to be going uh, as of early March. Um, but I think what I'd like to do, uh, Neil, is, is, is talk to you a little bit about why all of this is happening. So, so let's start by looking at, you know, what have been the drivers for the, the current paper um, sort of shortage um, that, that's obviously been taking place since uh, before Christmas? Sure. Um, yes, Dan. I mean, it, it, in a way, it's been unprecedented. Um, I've talked to people about um, the last time that we experienced such shortages, and it, we, we'd have to go back 40 years or so. Um, so the, the, the drivers have been, um, first of all, uh, an increased demand um, on e-commerce. And that's come because uh, many, many, many people in many countries are at home. So e-commerce packaging had certainly seen an increase and a rise. But it's also seen a, um, an early call for um, extra corrugated in November. Um, and that was quite a jump. And, and talking to both integrated plants and sheet plants and sheet feeders, um, they saw a, 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 an incredible rise in the demand of corrugated generally, um, such that lead times went out for board, um, whereas you could get board turned around in a series of days um, for sheet plants. Um, it was taking several weeks, and actually lead time went out by um, December time, out to six to eight weeks um, for, for board, particularly, as I say, particularly for sheet plants where it was noticed. Um, the... the um, demand that we've been seeing and we we plot this with um, uh, we call it Modi so e-commerce packaging we call it Modi um, we've been seeing that rising um, by nearly 10 percent um, year on year so every month that's increasing hugely so that's been that's been a contributing factor so demand high we've also had some restrictions people have been um, poorly with COVID they've had to self-isolate and that has caused manning to be a, a, an issue, both in um, plants, integrated plants, sheep plants, um, and, and uh, paper mills. A few people being off and you know man down, and that's the, you know these are run lean. And the third is waste collection. So waste collection has been an issue. One just picking up on that COVID thing that the people have been ill. The waste collections and so waste collection um, uh, physically people not being around. And also we've not we've, we've had this rapid change from collection of waste materials from the retailers where we have an excellent system in place around Europe, where we're now collect, having to collect it from home. So domestic collection, so curbside collection, and we're, we're not quite as efficient. So people are holding on to a cardboard box for two, three, four weeks, whereas at a retailer, um, it's used, consumed, and it's straight back into the system. So all of these things have been a you might say a, a perfect scenario for shortage of materials and an impact on the, the cost and price of the paper and huge demand for corrugate so um well neil it's um it's interesting that you pick up on that point about the recycling because uh, it was actually um even mentioned in the national press you know by the bbc and they picked up on it and uh, obviously there was a lot of finger pointing at um, some of the larger online retailers um, and, you know, they were saying, oh, well, they've just sucked all of the board out of the uh, supply chain. But, you know, that's, um, I think that's a little bit unfair. Uh, I don't think I it's just the e-tailers. Um, but, but one of the CEOs of, of one of the big groups actually uh, went out to, to, to counter it and just say, look, 
you know, online uh, retailing has been around for years. This is not, nothing new, okay? We're all doing a bit more of it, but I think your point about collection um, is, is absolutely spot on because yeah. effectively they're saying, um, as consumers, we are hoarding our corrugated until it makes sense to recycle it. Yes. Um, yeah. And of course, the supermarkets, as you say, I mean, I think it's DS Smith who say, you know, box to box in 14 days. Uh, and that's obviously just not happening at the moment. No, no. I mean, I think we're, we're well known in Europe for recycling um, and 85% of, of um, uh, corrugated. And that's, you know, much better than recycling rate than um, for, for other products. But um, in the last year or so, because of the way that we've changed in consuming, a lot more going to homes, a lot more in the, the, the home dustbin, then the, the responsibility on consumers to put this box back into the system. They, they've not really understood, but I think there's some great publicity that's being undertaken. I know in the UK and uh, by CPI, by FEFCO around Europe and, and with ICA actually globally starting to get the message to consumers saying, please put that box into your trash bin as quick as you can, because it will help. And, and that's, that's the important thing because um, that's had an impact, as you say, on the um, materials being short in supply. And it's, it's, it's a classic supply and demand scenario that we're in. There is less supply available and high demand. So um, the, the pricing, as you indicated, pricing's gone up. Um, the, the, um, uh, paper mills have indicated prices up in the first quarter of, of 2021. And I know that um, box plants and sheet plants have, have gone to the marketplace. They have to have to pass it on. And it certainly looks as though that there's going to be more price rises with demand as it is. So, um, yeah, that, that, as you rightly say, driven by people not recycling. It's, it's, it's this current scenario that we see. So, um, Right, time to ask you to polish off your crystal ball here. Uh, here because, um, I mean, if you were to, to, to look at the shape of the next two to three months, how do you see it all panning out? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And, and I mean, that's, that's what NOAA is all about. I mean, uh, crystal ball gazing and trend uh, analysis and trend, trend um, review. Uh, and in fact, we, we have a report out, which we, we've um, publicized the details briefly in, in IPBI. In, in February, um, and we've got some in-depth details in that. But really, the, the, the headline for me is, um, I think the, the perfect storm as well was um, Brexit. Um, that, that contributed towards the high demand in quarter four. We're seeing the, 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 the um, shakeout, let's say, of, of the, the effect of Brexit that, 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 um, coming through in quarter one. So the first thing is there was high stock building in quarter four. That stock building's not happening, so that's eased the um, demand curve. The second thing is a, a lot of product was being um, uh, affected in this quarter in particular, but a little bit in quarter four through ports, uh, ports in mainland Europe and in the UK. So that's, that hasn't gone away. There's still, there's a lot of paperwork to be filled out and, and all the feedback that I have, and we, as you know, I do a lot of work with a, a company that sells um, B to C and at the moment it, it's um, sending product into mainland Europe and actually product is being held up in places like Bristol or Northampton as they're waiting to, waiting to have customs clearance. Um, and when I know talking to colleagues in uh, mainland Europe, it's the same scenario there. So there's actually this sort of paperwork that everybody's trying to, to understand. So that, that, that will work its way through in quarter one as, as well. So I can see things easing there. And um, people were talking about quite a lot of ghost orders in the system. Um, so people have ordered knowing that the lead times have gone out to nearly two two and a half three months so they've been putting in orders for um in december which um, might have been in in february or march and th those a number of those orders will probably not be needed so i think there's ghost orders in the system so in quarter one it'll shake its way out but there's there's no doubt corrugated has grown um but 2019 versus 2020 has grown by one and a half to two percent so overall corrugated demand is it has been good but it's a heck of a spike in quarter four and i think it'll um it's it's calming down for um uh, for the next two or three months now neil um i, I want to come back very sensitively to uh, <laughs> to pricing um because you know as as an external observer uh, on the industry what, what i can't 
um, I can't do the maths on this at the moment, is when we look and see how much new capacity has come on during the second half of 2020, now I'm talking specifically now about recycled papers uh, being produced in Europe. Um, you know, when you look at that new capacity that's, that's come on stream, um, how, do you, how do you view it in terms of this, this extraordinary situation of this supply and demand balance? Because obviously there's a load of paper out there. So you know, wh why have we got all of these moves on pricing at the moment? Yeah. It's a, it's a very good point. I mean, actually, have we got a load of paper or have we got a load of paper making capacity? And I think, actually, back to our discussion about uh, is paper going into, is recycled paper or is waste paper going into the system to allow us to make all that paper? Is the potential that those mills have being realised? And I, I, I think not. Um, and, and that's a big, big part of the driver. You're absolutely right. And this is why I'm confident that the this, this um, peak in demand and, and, and this unusual um, shortage of, of materials is a short-term thing and that things will come back to, to um, uh, some degree of normality. There's, there's no doubt um, waste paper is a crucial part of this and actually some waste paper not being collected, we talked about that some waste paper has been going out of mainland Europe, out, you know, out of all of Europe. So there's been a shortage of materials available. People in other parts of the world have been paying higher prices for that um, for OCC um, and that's that's starting to level out again so I think there's the base material to be able to realize the capacity of the mills and there's no doubt there's there's a lot of recycled capacity in the marketplace so again I'm, I'm sure that um, production will come and will will um, will keep up with demand which is and demand is pretty astounding you know growing at one and a half two percent um in, in the industry that's that's high for a, a mature industry that's high so um it takes a bit of a while just to flex to that but i'm sure it, it um material will become available for those recycled mills so um neil let's now have a look at the effect that covid has actually had on our industry and obviously you know we've talked in previous uh, podcasts about the direct uh, impact that it's had on the manufacturing uh, sector in terms of you know workers out of uh, out of the factory etc cetera, etc cetera. but um do you think that or, or how do you see that that sort of long term effect on corrugated demand uh, what, what what impact is covid going to have i i think um, for, it's likely to have a, a highly significant one um you know i was saying that um corrugated demand one and a half two percent so you know there's there's a a, a gradual increase um overall but different market sectors are fed um so differently so if you're in let's say predominantly industrial then um th those um those market sectors tend to be a little bit less buoyant um, if you're in in the not just in in e-commerce but if you're in food and drink those market sectors have been very buoyant so depending on which market sector you're in is vitally important to know um, and if you're not analyzing um, where you are where your um, demand is coming from within your box plant within your sheet plant within your your business you could be in some trouble and it's it's one of the things we we've said we, we've been um, um we've written a report very recently in fact it's been a, a quite a feeding frenzy which we've been delighted with with um, people subscribing towards our, our report because within that we break down what market sectors are faring well what market sectors are not faring so well and we've got some you know some market sectors growing by 125 percent well you know that's great as long as you've got the machinery and you've got the ability to cope with that demand um, but if you're not in that market sector, and some some uh, people that we've been talking to have been saying, well, actually, 2020 was a sort of a 75% versus 2019 year, so you know, a, a quarter down in turnover. Um, so some some people have fared badly, and that's to do with the depression of certain market sectors they're in, whether it's automotive, aerospace, obviously, you know, that, that those sectors have, have not fared well. So it's about identifying what are the rising stars want a better description um, and uh, what are the ones that are the, the, that are the dogs and, and Neil do, do you think that uh, I mean permanence is rather a harsh word but 
But do you feel that this is a, um, a semi-permanent change um, that the industry is now going to have to live with? Yeah, I mean, I think the great thing about corrugated is it's so resilient. Um, corrugated has adapted. I mean, I, I've been in the industry for 40, 45 years, and I've just seen so many peaks um, and, and um, jumps in, in demand for different areas. But collectively, corrugated has, has fared well and, and has been an excellent product and for, for ongoing customer demand. So we're in you know, a highly flexible, highly adaptable, um, resilient industry. But um, COVID will definitely have a, a permanent effect in certain market sectors, there's no doubt. And you, know, it's, you just need to look at the jobs that people are now having. So um, there's, there's certain jobs that um, people wouldn't have considered. So you know, delivery drivers for online um, food and drink companies for the, for the retailers. Well, the, the huge demand for, for that role. Now, that's an obvious one, but there's other roles that, um, that there's demand for now. And there's other roles where, you know, other jobs where people um, won't be employed. And there, there's, um, you know, there'll be 20% um, of, of the, um, the, the, the jobs that um, used to be in, in place. So you, you can see it in that very stark way. And it's the same way for demand for corrugate. Um, and as I said, you, you need to identify what's the right product as well as the, the, the right market sector. Some of the customers I've been talking to have been saying huge demand for die cut, huge demand. We've talked about this before about um, taping. So have you got the right equipment and machinery to satisfy the new demand? And that's what's happening with COVID. Um, and then one other thing for COVID is there's been a lot of new companies that have, have really flourished, small, small businesses. And it's particularly, we see this particularly in the, the sheep plant sector where a lot of new companies who might have ordered literally a thousand boxes a year are now ordering tens of thousands of boxes a month. Um, and it, that's a, a lot of the customers that we deal with are saying, there's been a, a phenomenal increase in small, medium-sized enterprises coming to the market for corrugated and really flourishing. So there's, a lot of new companies uh, that are being looked after by sheep plants at the moment and, and um, no doubt by integrated companies as, as the months and years go on. So I, a, a, the change, I think, is a permanent one and you need to be identifying who, who are the key players. So, so Neil, um, I'd like to um, sort of wrap up this uh, particular podcast just with, with your thoughts. Um, I haven't been in the industry quite as long as you. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I think coming up 25 years. <laughs> I'm coming up 25 years. And of course, you know, when I joined, it was, um, I think there was probably somewhere in the region of uh, 110 corrugators running yeah. in the UK. Um, today, it's significantly less than that. Um, at that time, it was probably in excess of 450, maybe 500 sheep plants. Yeah. Uh, and th those numbers today are radically different. Um, obviously, we've seen um, in the last uh, couple of weeks, there's been announcements of acquisitions, um, particularly with Europeans coming in and buying um, uh, plants in the UK. Um, but with this growth in that sort of smaller to medium uh, type of customer who's who's sort of trying to move from a thousand pieces a month to ten thousand pieces a month. Yes. Do you think this opens opportunities for um, the the sort of the rebirth of what I call really small niche uh, sheep plants? Yeah, yeah. I I'm, I mean I I think the, um, the the opportunity is definitely there. We're already seeing. Um, I mean, in our report, we we um, we, we demonstrate that it actually it's. To just over 200 sheep plants, as you say, it used to be 400 um, 25 years ago. But actually, amongst those um, 215 sheep plants, we've seen about 20 new sheep plants in, in um, that sector. And the second thing is we've seen some people growing phenomenally. So um, it's a really um, positive area to be. It's a very um, active area to be in. And depending on the specialism that you've got as a sheep plant, then um, you know you could be doing very well. One of the other things that we've seen, and um, in, in the um, article in IPBI, it shows that the growth of one particular integrated company who got into the sheep plant market, who have bought four or five significant sheep plants and have grown their share of the sheep plant market, and they are really doing well. So if there was a, a company to follow, it's Smurfit Caput, that they have invested heavily into the sheep plant market, and are benefiting and, and as you say there are 
a number of uh, foreign com uh, companies, uh, Schumacher being one, um, uh, and, and a number of others who are coming in and, and are in discussions at this moment. So the, the, the sheep plant sector is very attractive for investment. So um, yeah, come on down. And, and Neil, obviously, you, you mentioned um, you know Schumacher there. Obviously, there, there's also been Klingler has come into the UK market. Uh, De Jong with the the announcement um, with the corrugated, and then just literally last week, Solidus uh, Solutions acquiring Heathpack. Um, do you think that's a little bit of a rearguard action against Brexit? Oh, I, I I think it's a demonstration that the UK market is a very attractive one. Um, and I think, as you say, it's, uh, there's been a strategic plan by a number of companies to make sure that they don't miss out on the, the opportunities that the UK market holds. So I, I, I think um, we'll see more of this, see more of this acquisition by European companies, mainland European companies. Well, Neil, thank you ever so much indeed. It's been great to catch up with you. Um, part six, uh, done and dusted. Um, and I will look forward to sitting down with you uh, over the next couple of weeks. And uh, let's get number seven in the can. So, Neil, thanks ever so much indeed and speak soon. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. And thanks to all your readers.